Well, across town on QU's campus, Pepsi Arena has seen its fair share of excitement this year with both the men's and women's basketball teams drawing crowds. But let's not forget about the men's volleyball team, winners of eight of nine at home this season. Pretty impressive. Tonight, it was Missouri Baptist University in town. Let's go to the action. First set, Hawks with a slight edge throughout. Robert Cordy on serve and the big block coming up here by Andrew Owano puts it down as QU out to that lead, as I said, in that first set. Now up 24-23, the opposition on serve. Set point, Steven Battaglia comes up with a big kill there. He puts it down in the back right corner. QU at that point goes up one set to nothing. Now Missouri Baptist got out to an early lead in the second set. So the Hawks battling back, but it was Joe Sokol from the back row here. He's going to just put a little bit less on this one and uh, get the point any way he can. So the Hawks battling back in the second set. Later that same set, it was Sokol on serve. He's going to get the big ace here, put it in the back left corner. Missouri Baptist didn't agree, but I checked the replay. It was absolutely on the line. And then still second set, Owano serving. Libero Brian Peth, he's going to start the setup for Batag who's going to get his changeup to fall, as you'll see here in just a moment. A little bit of an off-speed delivery there, and that goes down as well. Missouri Baptist, though, would take the second set, but a good win for QU tonight. They rally and win this one by a score of 3-2. to two. And there's a few big games in the area we're going to keep track of here, both tomorrow night and Thursday night. First, of course, it's the Western Illinois men playing in the CBI first round against the Oregon State Beavers. That was or excuse me, coming up tomorrow at 9 p.m. Now the team was in the air today. It was a travel day out to Oregon, but yesterday had a chance to catch up with the team to get their thoughts on the Pac-12 opponent. Whenever you play those teams in those power leagues, the thing you notice difference is their physicalness. Uh, so they have, you know, Ahmad Starks from Chicago, who I've seen is very good point guard, and Cunningham is very good two guard. But then they play a lot of, you know, they're 6'10", 6'10", inside. And, I think that's, you have to rebound with them. They have a big uh, lineup. Their backcourt is pretty big. They have a 6'10", three-guard, really athletic, uh, two-guard. They run a lot, so hopefully we'll slow down the pace with them. But they're a Pac-12 team, so they can play basketball, but we can compete too. So we're, we're trying to get this win to show everybody that we compete on a high level every game. It's good for a challenge for us. You know, we know we didn't play that much size ever this year, so it, it, we up for the challenge, and it's going to be good. Basketball's a game that makes and misses. When it really comes down to it, we played great against South Dakota, made shots early, and then missed open shots late. And it's going to be the same thing. If you go on the road, you have to make some shots, and so that's what that'll be a big part of it. Hopefully, we can get our nerves under control, play through our emotions, and make some wise decisions and hit some shots. Also, keep an eye out for the Missouri Class 1 girls semifinal. Of course, Marion County playing in that on Thursday at 6.40 p.m. A lot of interesting storylines in both semifinals here. Marion County, of course, undefeated. Their opponent, Eminence, is 27-1 and on the season. Now, Eminence, their only loss as we flash ahead here to the next game was to Walnut Grove, who was on the other side of the semifinal. And ironically enough, Marion County's last loss was to Jefferson Conception two seasons ago, who is 28-2 on the season. So I did have a chance today to catch up with the Lady Mustangs, get their thoughts on Eminence, and one big advantage that they believe is in their favor Thursday night. One of the main challenges will be uh, handling their pressure. Uh, they like the uh, run and jump and trap and all over the court. That's part of their game, and they live off uh, transition. They like to run the floor. So uh, in that respect, they're a lot like us. I think it's good that we're going to play a team that's like us because we know their strengths and their weaknesses. They run, we run. Should be a pretty good game. Just got to keep our heads and not under underestimate anybody. They have a really nice guard, Williams. Uh, she's a and they start five seniors who have been uh, working towards this for their whole career. So they're hungry. I'm pretty sure. Uh, they're definitely a quality team. I mean, you guys have been there so many times before. How big is familiarity when you get to this point? Just how much pressure does that take off of your team? Just knowing what the surroundings are and kind of knowing what to expect. I think it, well, I think what it really does is it allows the kids to focus on the game and not get caught up so much in all the extra that goes along with it. It's like a second home, and it's like our home gym almost, and we're getting pretty used to it. It's, I think it's an advantage that we've been there, you know, that even though we still get the jitters, it's, it's just like home. <laughs> well, no matter what happens, it's, it's a great memory uh, just to have the opportunity to be there playing in, a, uh, in that situation. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to the, the, the trip down there.